Behind me is a 2001 Volkswagen Beetle. When I think of a Beetle of this era, I normally think of a brightly coloured, cutesy little car with a flower on the dash. But this one, this one's slightly different. It's the antithesis of that because it's the rebel of the bunch. This is the Beetle RSI. <laughs> The RSI looks like it's been given steroids when compared to the standard Beetle it started life out. What they've done is taken a hippie sandal and turned it into an athlete's running shoe. You could just imagine how excited the engineers were when they were told they could cut loose on the cute little Beetle that VW had been churning out. Get the toys out lads and beef it up with whatever performance parts you can find. Except we know that Volkswagen would never take such a laissez-faire approach to the development of one of their cars. No, the inception of this car was much more calculated because, after all, this was the development testbed for the Volkswagen Golf R32. Underneath the squat bonnet is the same 3.2 litre V6 that appears in the later R32. But whilst the Golf would be mass-produced, the RSI was limited to just 250. The exterior has been significantly beefed up. You can see that pretty much from every stance of the car. It's actually about eight centimetres wider. It's certainly not subtle, but it's not Subaru Impreza levels of in your face. And you don't need an ankle tag to drive one of these. Right, so what did the RSI badge get you back in 2001? Well, there's this bulbous custom body kit, which makes the car as I say, much, much wider and gives it a really, really good presence over the original Beetle. Then we've got these fabulous OZ Racing Super Turismo alloys and they look just so crisp on the car. Round the back, you get a massive tea tray spoiler and below the huge wing, there's a set of twin Remus exhausts, which make really quite a nice noise. You notice at the back, not only how wide the car is, but how far apart these two exhausts are and then in between that you've got all this aero space here you've almost got if you look down below the car this diffuser running through the back here above that we also have some level of practicality because below the wing we do have a boot and that does open up just like so and then you've got a very nice decent size usable boot there behind those back seats. Right, let's go check out the rest of the interior. Right, this is certainly very different from a standard Beetle. First of all, you sink into these very deep, brightly coloured orange Recaro racing seats. They are very, very snug indeed. And when you close the door, you notice this massive carbon fiber on the inside of the door card and then you've got lots of aluminium all over the place the door handle there no electric windows we've got a manual winding window here bit of weight saving for the rsi oh that's actually quite hard to haven't done one of those for a while in front of you it's pretty sort of standard stuff they've not really changed much on the steering wheel at all and then the instrument panel in front of you, rev counter, speedometer, and a little LED light, which I'll talk about a bit later on. We've got three gauges in the sense console showing the oil temperature, the oil pressure, and the battery gauge there. Usual sort of things with air conditioning creature comforts. And then below that, importantly, we've got this six speed manual box. This actually is very reminiscent of the gearbox in the Mark 1 Audi TT. It's almost identical, except that this is a much shorter shifter. It's a very stubby little thing, but um, feels and looks very cool. Now, another thing to note is the absence of the radio in the centre console there. You've actually got a little tray down here, which you can put your phone in. There's a little 12 volt plug as well, but no radio there because it's up in the headlining. I mean, that's really quite an unusual thing to see, but pretty cool nonetheless. Oh, in the footwells, we've got aluminium footrests and these lovely 
aluminium pedals. There's more carbon fiber in the back and actually surprisingly some usable seats behind these deep back seats. This whole transmission tunnel from the gearbox down to the handbrake actually looks like it's come out the Mark 1 TT. Everything's the same. The, ha the handbrake lever is the same whole thing. Just to the right of the handbrake you've got a commemorative plaque and that just shows the RSI badge and the addition of 250 and the number of this car which is number 23. Right, move the seat forward, get that into position. Usual sort of Volkswagen key of this era, that's just slots into there. Turn it, nothing happens, the lights come on because you actually have a push button start, which is quite a nice feature. So clutch in. And away we go, time for a drive. The view out of the back of the car is absolutely dominated by that huge wing. Not only is the car pretty wide, but you've got a huge amount of space, partly because these bucket seats are so deep and partly because you've got that lovely dome shape to the Beetle's roof line. Another cool feature when you're driving along is that you've got your traditional rev counter and speedometer, but in between those two, you've got this little plaque there with lots of LED lights and that serves as another rev counter. So as you climb up the revs, those little LED lights light up till you get all the way until you redline it. But it's just quite cool, a fun thing to watch as you drive around. So another plus for the RSI. Nought to 60 is about 6.4 seconds. So it's not lightning quick, certainly not by modern standards, but on the back roads, traveling along and listening to that lovely exhaust note, it's a lot of fun. This car, when it was new, was over 50 grand. 50 grand for a Beetle. That is a lot of money back in 2001. I mean, that's Porsche 911 money. So you've got to be a real VW enthusiast or extremely wealthy or both to stump up the cash for something like this. I know that this was essentially a development car for the R32 and it's great to have limited cars, but you kind of wish that there were more of these about because they just have something about them. They just look cool. They're different, they're quirky, they're fun to drive. And the old Beetles were sort of customized and modded and it's really nice when a manufacturer does a special edition. You just wish that more people got the chance to enjoy them really. Usually with special edition cars, there's some kind of compromise you have to make, some kind of deal with the devil as it were. We'll give you a big, thumping engine or we'll give you stiffer suspension and better brakes but you'll have no boot and you'll get to your destination with a sore back but with the RSI it doesn't seem to be too much compromise that I can find in fact I'm surprised by the space I'm surprised by how comfortable it is it's certainly fun out on these B roads and you get all the practicality of the standard Beetle with that awesome look of the body kit and those wonderful, wonderful racing alloys. They just look magnificent. Whoa, yes. Sounds good. The RSI is 21 years old now and I think perhaps it's finally getting the limelight that it rightly deserves. Nobody ever asked for this car, but let's face it, some of our favorite cars of all time have been developed when nobody's really asked for them. And I'm grateful that this one exists. 
I can understand why cars like this are becoming collector's items today because whilst they're by no means fast, it's all the features and quirks and personality which make it feel good. And in doing so, make you feel good driving it. This car may well end up in a collection somewhere, but I hope that the buyer of this car takes it to shows because it would be a brilliant thing to share with all motoring enthusiasts because I don't think I've ever seen one of these in the flesh before. This is the first time and uh, it's really rather impressive. Will we ever see anything like this from VW again? Well, I don't really know, but what I am sure of is that this is always going to appeal to the enthusiasts, to the collectors. It's brilliant. It's also for sale on collectingcars.com, so go check it out while it's still around, because there aren't many of these about. <laughs>